In this video, we explore the random color switch node introduced in Redshift 2025.2. The random color switch node lets you define a set of colors or textures and randomly distribute them to your clones, instances, or regular objects. Additionally, it allows you to control the probability of each color appearing, giving you the ability to make certain colors more prevalent than others. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, Redshift Masterclass, your complete guide to Redshift for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 19 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Open up the dynamic simple object scene in the scene folder of your project files. Add a new standard material in the material manager and assign it to the cloner Alembic group and then open up its node editor. If I open up the cloner Alembic group, it contains a lot of objects that are baked from a normal cloner and converted to Alembic. Let's start an IPR session in the under view. Right now, all the clones get this gray color from the standard material. Now let's press C and from the utility nodes, switch nodes, add a random color switch node. The random color switch node allows you to add as many color inputs as you need. By default, it has two color inputs. Let's use this add input button to add another color input. And now we can define the colors that we want to randomly distribute. For the first color, let's use this orange with the RGB values of 185, 101, and 23. For the second color, let's use this very light gray with the RGB values around 194. And for the third color, maybe a teal with the RGB values of 9, 106, and 90. Now that we have defined the colors that we want, simply connect it to the color input that you want to be controlled by this node, which in this case is the base color. The cool thing about the random color switch node is the weight parameter for each color, which allows you to control how often a color can appear. For example, if I want the white color to appear less compared to the other two colors, I can lower the weight to maybe 0.25. If I want the orange ones to be half the teal ones, I can simply lower the shader one weight to 0.5. So this is extremely handy and useful. Let me just connect the random color switch node to the subsurface color input as well. Increase the SSS weight to 1 and lower SSS scale to 0.35. Now, we could have done the same thing with a jitter and a ramp node like we learned previously, but this is certainly easier and it also allows you to use textures as well. For example, instead of the orange color, let's use a texture. So add a texture node. And load this wood underscore zero four texture. then connect it to shader one color input. We can make the render view bigger to see the texture. Now, instead of a simple color, we are using a texture. Maybe we can increase shader one weight to one to see it on more objects. Pretty cool. Up here, we have this seed value to change the seed that determines the random assignment. So change it until you like the distribution that you see. For now, let me disconnect the texture so we can see the orange color again. Up here, we have this input ID mode and by default, it is set to name ID. It is the same parameter that we had in the jitter node, exactly the same. When the input ID mode is set to name, randomization is based on objects name in the scene. Right now, if I check out this cloner Alembic group that I got from converting this cloner to Alembic, you notice all the individual objects have a different name. So when the input mode is set to name ID, a random color can be assigned to each individual object. 
let's stop IPR. If I hide this Alembic group and unhide the cloner object itself, and assign the material to the cloner as well and run IPR again. We get the same correct color randomization as Cinema 4D internally treats each individual clone as a separate object with a different name. For this to work properly for cloner objects, the instance mode of the cloner has to be set to instance and not render instance or multi instance modes. For now, let's hide the cloner and unhide the Alembic again. We have two other input ID modes. When set to object ID, randomization is based on the Redshift object ID that a user can set on each object. If you right click on any object and add an RS object tag, you can obviously assign a unique object ID to that object from the object ID tab. So the objects with the same object ID would get the same color. And when set to user data ID, randomization is based on a custom user attribute. And frequently this is accomplished with an integer user data node as the user data input to the random color switch shader, which references an attribute added to objects in the scene. We will get back to this later on. Let's set it to name ID and continue with the rest of the parameters. Let me increase the shader to weight 2.5 as well so we can get more white instances. Then we have this color jitter tab where we can add hue, saturation, and value variations to our color inputs. So if I enable it, we start to add a small amount of variation. Let me set the saturation and value variations min and max values to zero, so we would only get hue variation. Now let's increase the hue max to 50. Now we start to add some hue variations around our color inputs. Let's try 0 and 100, 0 and 200, 0 and 360, and finally negative 360 to 360 for the full range of hue variation. Then we can add saturation variations, maybe from negative one to one. Now some of the colors are fully saturated and some are completely desaturated. We can use a smaller range for less variation on saturation. And finally, we can add some value variation, which is pretty cool. And all of them have a seed value to get different randomizations. For now, let me set the value and saturation variations min and max to 0 and 0. Now, if I add a new random color switch node and connect it to the base and SSS color of the material, and remove one of its color inputs, and change the color for the remaining color input to any color, maybe a sign with the RGB values of 0, 139, and 160. Now I can go to the Color Jitter tab, enable it, and now this would work like a regular jitter node, and we can add variation around one color instead of a few. And if I zero out the hue and saturation variation, and change the color from cyan to black and also change the value variation range to negative one to one. Now we have assigned a random grayscale color to our instances the way we did it with the standalone jitter node. For now, let me connect the previous random color switch node to the standard material. Now, if I hide the cloner Alembic group, add a cube to the scene, 
and change its size to 86, 25, and 197. Enable fillet with 5 centimeters of radius and 5 subdivisions and then create a new standard material and assign it to the cube. Let's have it opened in the node editor as well. One of the cool things we can do with a random color switch node is to colorize Maxon noise to make some creative looks. Let me show you how to do that. Select the material that is assigned to the cube, add a new Maxon noise node, and let's solo it. Let's change the noise type to maybe Voronoi 1 and increase the overall scale to 200. Now add a multiply node and connect the max noise to input one of the multiply node and then increase input two of the multiply node to anything you want, maybe around 10 for now. We'll get back to this in a moment and the reason we added it here, we're basically making the output of the noise value broader. For example, if the noise value is from 0 to 1, we have multiplied that by 10, so we get a broader range of values to work with. Now add a random color switch node. And let's say we want to colorize our noise with six colors. So let's make sure we have six inputs. For the first color, use this orange with the RGB values of 255, 128, and 14. For the second one, use this vibrant pink with the RGB values of 175, 1, and 25. For the third color, use this purple with the RGB values of 70, 7, and 24. Then this teal with the RGB values of 4, 58, and 55. Then this cyan with the RGB values of 44, 164, and 186. And the final one can remain at white. Now change the input ID mask to user data ID and connect the multiply node to the user data input of the random color switch node and finally connect the random color switch node to the base color of the material. And now we get this beautiful pattern created by colorizing the Maxon noise with a random color switch node. If I select the multiply node and set the input 2 to 0 and start increasing it by maybe 1 increments, you notice we start to get different looks. As I mentioned, the reason we use the multiply node is that the noise node, if I solo it, by default outputs a range from 0 to 1. We use the multiply node to increase that range as much as we want. In turn, when the multiply node is connected to the user data input of the random color switch node, we would get a bigger pool of IDs to choose from, and that would boost the total number of IDs available, thereby enhancing the potential for variety. For now, let's set it back to 10 and unsolo the noise. I can select the noise and change the noise type to get different looks. Pretty cool, obviously you can play around with different parameters of the Maxon noise node to get different looks. For now, let's set it to Voronoi 1. Now, if I select the random color switch node, I can use the weight amount for each color input to control how prevalent that color is in the final result. For example, if I want to see more orange, I can increase its weight to 2 or 3 to get more orange.
For now, let's set it to one. Now let's go to the second scene for this lesson, which is 0428 jitter scene 02.c4 default from the project files. Here I have this simple cloner object. Let me add a new standard material and assign it to the clones. Let's run IPR and open up the material that is assigned to the cloner object. Add a random color switch node and connect it to the base color. Let's maybe have three colors and choose three different colors. The input ID mode is set to name ID. If I select the cloner object itself and change the instance mode to render instance or multi instance, you notice it does not work and all the clones would get the same color. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, we have to use the render instance or multi instance mode to keep the scene manageable. So what is the workaround here? One of the attributes that Redshift can access is the individual ID that Cinema 4D assigns to each clone regardless of the instance mode. If I add an integer user data node, Remember, we want to access the ID of each clone, which is a whole number with no decimal places. So that's why we add the user data integer node. Now from the presets, load the MoGraph object ID preset. In the random color switch node, change the input ID to user data ID. And connect the integer user data node to the user data input of the random color switch node. And now we have properly assigned a random color to all the clones. We might need to refresh IPR to see the results. And if I change the cloner objects instance mode to any of the modes and refresh IPR, we would get the correct result. In case you wanted to use a random color switch node with particles instead of the MoGraph object ID attribute in the integer user data node, use particle ID. So that's about random color switch node. See you in the next one.